Well, what's up, everybody? Happy Monday morning. Hope it hope it's Monday. If it is Monday, right? Yesterday was Sunday. I was thinking, if it is Monday, um, as you guys are jumping on, uh, is Monday like it used to be? You know, Monday used to be this deal where we all had to drag ourselves out of bed and head to work. Hey, Joy, good morning. But I don't know if Monday feels the way it used to feel, or as Ryan said in our service yesterday, is like Thursday blurs day, and we can't tell one day from the other. But it is Monday. For me, that means extra coffee. Good morning, Ann. Um, Juliana, good to see you. I woke up kind of tired today. Donnie, good to see you. I don't know why, so I'm on my third cup of coffee. I've been hammering it down, but I am watching the sunrise, and that is good. Good things. I'm April, Robbie, good to see you all. Love to see you all jumping on. Holy cow, people are jumping on like crazy this morning. Um, I guess I can look myself in the mirror and say I'm good enough and I'm smart enough and doggone it. People love me. Remember that from Saturday Night Live years ago. Um, let me see. Connie, Sarah, Nikki, Howard. Good morning to everybody. If I missed your name, I apologize. I'm slow on the draw of these things sometimes. Allie, good morning. Hey, we had such a good weekend. Kim, good morning. Glad you're joining us. Vicki, good to see you too. Oh, this is a lot of fun. Karen, making my whole, whole day. Hey, Karen, look at my hair. I can't get Tina to cut it, and I don't know what to do with it, but I'm, work, I'm I'm thinking about letting it grow out, like going mullet man on it. Probably not. Teresa, Ann, Randy, good to see you all this morning. All right, got to get to it. Good morning to everybody in general who's jumping on. I can't keep up. Um, so this weekend was a great weekend. We had so much fun um, filming and doing our services this weekend. But I think the highlight of my weekend was that food drive we did Saturday. Um, if you didn't know about it, you can catch the next one. But we had a gob of people show up and drop off food um, to the whole f delivery to food pantry thing we were doing. And so Saturday we did that. We filled up two big trailers. We took them to four different food pantries. And it was so cool to fill their shelves. So those of you that participated, thank you, thank you. That was amazing. And you know this. It was great because when we have purpose in our life, when we get outside ourselves and do for other people, it always brings us some joy and encouragement. So just keep doing that, whether it's with the church on your own, we'll be doing it again. But I have to tell you something that I did. Um, I was in charge of driving one of the trailers. I have a truck and I want to show off my truck. So I got one of the trailers full of food, which people had packed the food in neatly and tightly and had to take it to two places and drove off with a you know, caravan of cars behind me to help me unload it. Did not even occur to me when I took off that there was food neatly placed in those trailers. So when I got there, I drove a little too fast, stopped a little too quickly. The food was a little bit disheveled and I, I caught a lot of grief over for not driving carefully, got teased a lot. Luckily it was canned goods and box goods and nothing was damaged. So that's my mistake, that's on me. Also, somebody brought in a whole case of peanut butter I almost stole it. I almost took it home for myself, and I thought, no, that's not a good thing to do. Still working on me, but I do love that peanut butter. Anyway, good job on all that, guys. Proud to be part of the church that we're in. Hey, we gather on these mornings um, to spend a little time together and get our hearts and minds focused on God, because this is what we know in the middle of the craziness that we're in, um, putting Jesus in the center of our lives makes our lives better and makes us better at life. And we just need time with God to get our days going. And hopefully this is a habit that we'll all continue after these days are done. And this morning I was reminded of something um, my dad had given me back when I was in college. It was a videotape, like a big VHS videotape. So I'm dating myself of Lou Holtz, Holtz, the Notre Dame football coach. And I'm not a Notre Dame fan, but Lou Holtz is a pretty amazing guy. And he, my dad gave this tape to me and it was of Lou talking to businessmen and women. And he said three things, and I'm just going to read them to you. He said, people ask three questions. Remember, he's talking to business people when they want to buy something from you. And these are three great things. They ask this, can I trust him? So if you're going to sell something to me, I'm going to ask, can I trust you? Does he know what he's talking about? And does he care about me? And I thought about that. Those are three great questions we ask in the business world, but those are really the three questions we ask in almost every relationship in our lives. Can I trust him? Can I really trust who he is or who she is? Does she or he know what he's talking about? Does he care about me? And you know, you ask that question of your boss when your boss tells you something. You ask that question of your children. Your children ask that question of you. We ask that question of our spouse, and ultimately we ask that question of our Heavenly Father. You see, when we ask the question, can I trust him, it's about character. And when, when I'm trying to help my wife, or serve my wife, or love my wife, or ask something of 
my wife, she asked the question, can I trust you, Matt? And she can trust me based on, you know, where I've been in my relationship to her. And then the question is, does he know what he's talking about? Think about this when we're trying to get our kids to move in the direction that we want them to go, whether they're you know 13 or 30. Dad, can I really trust you? Do you know what you're talking about? Really, what the question really is, is about confidence. Do I really believe this person is competent? And ultimately, do I really believe God is competent? And then ultimately, the last question is, does he care about me? Does she care about me? And I think in any relationship, marriage, parenting, business, neighbors. Does she care about me? Does he care about me? Is really what it comes down to. Because if I believe you care about me, I'm going to listen and I'm going to trust. And your level of competence and your level of character in my mind and my heart are going to go up centered on trust. I mean, think about this. When we raise our kids, I know not everybody online this morning is a parent. But when we raise our kids, we really want our kids to be trustworthy. We want them to walk through life as people that um, can be counted on. When it comes to, you know, do they know what they're talking about, their confidence? We want our kids to find something to do with their lives that they're good at and then to excel at it, whatever it may be. But ultimately, we want them to have this characteristic of, I care about other people, compassion. And the truth is, in our world, compassion is not always the highest value. But in any great relationship, when someone knows you care, when someone knows that you have compassion, it is a game changer. And for us, for me as a Jesus follower, every day I wake up and I think about the direction of my life and following Jesus. And I have to go through these same questions every day. Jesus, can I trust you? And what I've learned over my life is Jesus has proven himself trustworthy. And over history and through what he did on the cross. Jesus, do you really know what you're talking about? Um, yesterday, I talked about relationships and raising kids and daughters. And I said some things that might have been you know, a little pushy. And I, I just think that's directed from the fact that Jesus told us to put such a high value on men and women and children and never diminish that. So, Jesus, I really do believe you know what you're talking about because you created me. And ultimately, Jesus, do you care? Do you have compassion? And for me, the game changer for that is always that Jesus came and he walked in my shoes on this earth and he paid for my sins. And to those questions for me when it comes to my relationship with God, it's yes, I trust you. Yes, I know. I think you know what you're talking about. And yes, I think you care. But there are days for me, just like you, that, that can be a little shaky. And I have to come back to who Jesus is. So the core of every relationship is trust, competency, and compassion. And I hope you have that in your life. And you're passing that on. You're receiving that. And ultimately, you're looking up to your Heavenly Father to find those things. As I was thinking about it, those three core relational attributes, I, I thought about a proverb that has always meant a lot to me and it's pretty famous. The proverb says this, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. And that's pretty good. Bind them around your necks and write them on the tablet of your heart. I mean, let this get inside who you are and your soul. And then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and men. I mean, this is what this is about, right? As I love my wife, as I love people, people say, you know, Matt's trustworthy. My mom's trustworthy. My friend's trustworthy. And then the question is, how do we do that? And the person that wrote Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Love well. But do it by trusting a God who is compassion, who is totally competent, and he knows you and he cares for you. And simply pass that on to other people. Isn't that good? Yeah, I didn't come up with it. So thanks to Lou Holtz and Jesus for putting those two things together this morning. That's really good stuff. Hey, I want to pray for you, and I'm just going to pray that these three things would be live and real in your life. And I'm going to go personal just for a second. I want to ask you to pray for me today. Um, and I, I'm, I guess I'm a little nervous about a job I have to do. Um, I have the opportunity and the privilege to do a funeral for a young child that's passed away. And it is not going to be easy, but I want to stand in the gap and you know, present Jesus well and love this family. And that's going to happen at one o'clock today. So if you would pray for me to do that child's funeral, I would really appreciate it, especially at one, because I want to do a good job. But I want to pray for all of us and including my stuff and uh, I'll let you go. Let's pray together, shall we? So Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that you're a God that we can trust. 
Lord, we know that because when Jesus went to the cross for us, we knew that he had our best interest in mind and he loved us more than anything else in the world. And Lord, that drives trust way down deep in our hearts. And Lord, help us to believe and trust that you know what you're talking about in every area of our lives. How we parent, how we love, how we date, how we take care of our marriage, how we take care of our parents, how we take care of our neighbors and love them well. Thank you, Jesus, for compassion that you literally stood in our shoes and took our punishment so we could know you and have a relationship to you. And Lord, help us to love you with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding and all our ways submit to you and let you make our paths straight and pass that along to other people. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done and all that you are. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for being with us today. We will see you tomorrow morning at 730. Keep leaning in and trusting Jesus because he loves you. Have a great day.